thanks for joining me today. I'm making a little girl onesie mini album using a paper collection from Knitway Collections and some gorgeous products from Wild Orchid Crafts. I am gluing some cardstock together. I'm using Georgia Pacific 110 pound cardstock and I'm gluing two of these together and then I will glue a pattern piece to the top and a pattern piece to the back side as well. So it ends up being four different layers, which gives it a very sturdy page. I am making five pages in my album. In the end, it ends up being like a light to medium weight chipboard consistency. So I was really happy with how it turned out. The paper collection I'm using is called Baby's First Girl Collection. They also have a boy collection as well. And I'm showing you here some layers for a collar that I'm going to be adding to each onesie. I glued two of them together off camera and now I'm gluing two more together so there's going to be four layers of the collar and I also do sleeves as well that I show you here in just a moment. I'll do four layers of those as well because I want them very dimensional being that this is going to be my cover page. For the rest of the pages I do add the sleeves and collars but I only add one layer. I didn't want those to be dimensional. I'm using some tweezer bee tweezers. Those kind of help me keep my fingers out of the way when I'm gluing smaller items down. And if you'd like, I can show you in a different video how I made the sleeves and collar, but it was very simple. I just designed that in my um, Silhouette Design Studio. I used Mary Fran's design. She designed this onesie that comes in the paper collection, and I just simply took my knife tool and cut out the sleeves and cut out the collar. And this way I could add a different pattern paper to each one of the onesies to give it such um, a unique look to each onesie. So here I'll give you a closer look so you can see the dimension that it gave. I was really, really happy with how that turned out. And I love this paper collection. Here are some elements that come with it, this adorable elephant and this little bottle. I'm adding a pocket. It's a little blurry at the moment. It'll it'll come back and focus, but this pocket was from my own collection. I'm adding a little stitching detail around the top with a Uniball Signo Gel white pen. And again, adding a few layers because I wanted this to be dimensional as well. The pink in the center is from the paper collection along with that pink and white stripe paper. I love that everything coordinates together. You don't have to put much thought into it at all. So I have to cut a little bit of the elephant's leg off to have him tuck in behind the pocket the way I wanted him just kind of peeking out the pocket along with his little bottle. And once I'm getting it in place where I want, I'm just gluing it down to hold it in place. And then I will go back and add glue to the entire backside to adhere it down to my cover. This is a dimensional heart. I think I did four or five layers on that as well to add to the front of my pocket. When I was gluing this down, the left ear of my elephant was popped up slightly and it looked so cute. So I kept it that way. I added some foam uh, squares behind the ear just to make sure that it didn't flatten out. And I just love the result of that. You may have seen I recently did a baby girl album using the same paper collection and it turned out beautifully. I love all the different patterns in this collection. So I have everything prepared. I will be gluing one of these um, or two of these on camera. The rest I will do off camera. I'm gluing the back side of this down, but you'll see that I decided to add some ribbon to the legs of the onesie. So instead of ripping that piece off, I just simply print and cut another one. So here's the duplicate one. And now I can sandwich my ribbon right in between those papers without having to rip it apart. So I'm using some hot glue along with this adorable pleated box trim from Wild Orchid Crafts and just adding that to the legs of the front cover and the back cover. I'm not doing that to any of the inside pages. So as you can see, I'm taking my lighter to the edges. It just sears the edges and that way it stops it from fraying. But you wanna be careful when you do that that you don't, of course, start your paper on fire, but also because you can burn your paper, you can give it that burnt look. So you wanna just be real quick with that. And now I'm sandwiching my second piece down, adding a little hot glue at the legs where the ribbon was. And I will clamp those and set them aside to dry while I do the same thing for the back page. 
But the difference with the back page is I didn't adhere my second piece on the back. So I didn't have to, again, rip anything apart or print and cut another one. I just simply added my ribbon and then sandwiched my pattern paper on the back. I'll have links to all the products used down in the description box along with on my blog as well. So check that out for more information. Here are some thumbtacks that I got from Target years ago. And I was cleaning my room the other day and came across them and I immediately thought of this project, this paper collection and how well these would work, how well they would coordinate with this collection. So I'm using my needle nose pliers. They have a wire cutter on them and I'm cutting up off a portion of the tack part, leaving just a tiny little bit sticking out. It's probably hard to tell on camera, but there's a little piece of the tack still in there. And what I'm going to do is add a little E6000 and hammer those into the shirt top to make it look like the buttons on a onesie. And it turned out perfect. The um, thumb or the tack part was not long enough to go through the other edge. So it just fit in there perfectly. I was really happy with the results of that. So now I'm using some critters that also come in the paper collection. And most of these I doubled off, doubled up off camera, but I wanted to show you here that I did double them because they're going to be left open for photos to slide behind them. So I wanted to make sure that they were sturdy enough that they didn't get bent. And I'm using that nonstick craft paper or nonstick paper that comes in with my ATG glue that I get. I make sure to save that and tuck it behind anything that I'm gluing down because I don't want to at all glue down that mat behind there. I want to make sure it's open so that the photo can slide behind there. So those really come in handy. And here you can see I'm using some photo mats. I cut out some photo mats again from the same paper collection, adding a white piece to the front. And I cut those to three and three quarters by two and three quarters. So a three and a half by three photo or a three and a half by two and three quarter photo will fit nicely on each page. I'm also adding several bows throughout. It looks so cute with the little girl album. It's a silhouette cut that I have. I'll try and remember to link to that in the description box. And I just simply add the pattern paper to the bows. I love that everything coordinates so well together. Here are some of the flowers that come in the collection. I'm adding a few of those and I will be adding some mulberry flowers from Wild Orchid Crafts as well. Again, making sure to leave those open so the photos can slide behind. I'm kind of working sporadically here. I'm working on some of the pages and then I'll go back to add a few embellishments to each page as well. This is going to be the backside of the album. I thought it would look cute to have a little ruffled backside. So I'm using some trim that I had in my stash. I'm doubling it up. And then I'm also adding a little label that comes in the collection. It says Heaven Sent. I'll be using several labels throughout. I think I printed out and cut out three or four, maybe four or five. It comes with lots of them. So I'm just using a few on this album. Here I wanted a little pull out tag so the mom could add a little journaling. So I put my tag in place, added my wet glue around it to make sure that the tag would be able to fit in there nicely. These little safety pins, I also doubled up on them off camera as well. And the labels I did not. So as you can see here, I'm just quickly gluing them to some cardstock and cutting them out because they're not fully glued down either. That way I wanna make sure they're stable as well. Plus, I love the little bit of dimension that it gives them. I'm adhering down a second safety pin, but you'll see I changed my mind here in a moment. I love that pink and white striped paper. So I added a little flowered mat behind it, and this pacifier is one of my favorites. Everything from this collection is my favorite. I love that pacifier. I believe it comes with two pacifiers in this collection. This is the only label I didn't double up on because I was mostly adhering it straight down to the uh, page. And this rattle is absolutely adorable.
Again, adding some cardstock behind this label. Here's where I changed my mind. I ripped that off and just added a little heart, leaving it open at the bottom. This little bottle is perfect for a, a tiny little journaling spot. It would be great for either a name or a date added to it. And now I'm just kind of flipping through. I knew that I wanted to add this bow to one of the pages, so I was looking through to um, see which page I was adding which bow to. So I'm just going to add both of those quickly here. Now I pulled out my Sweetheart Blossoms from Wild Orchid Crafts. I'm adding three of the white ones, but I will pull one of them off and add one of the pink ones. The Sweetheart Blossoms comes, comes in all different colors, and these are perfect with the Little Girl album. I'm gluing down some of the leaves that come in the paper collection. Here's where I rip off one and put the pink, and you'll see that I even add something else at the end here. I'm adding one of them to the middle of that bow and a few at the top. And here I'm adding an ivory cabochon. I love these. It's a perfect combination with the Little Girl album. I did add a little E6000 first and then some hot glue so that it gives the E6000 some time to dry. And once that dries, that E6000 is permanent. So I'm doing that here with this little ivory heart. Look how cute that heart is in that bow. It's perfect for a little girl album. They work great in wedding albums as well. I added a little flat back heart on the right there. Here I'm using a little rhinestone embellishment with diamond center. An open rose. You may not be able to see, but there are a few of those paper flowers tucked there on that left side. So I added a, a couple leaves and another sweetheart blossom. Here I'm using a rhinestone um, a pearl in, with a rhinestone circle. And these are eyelets or grommets that I got in the sewing section at Walmart. They're really cheap in price and they're also pretty thin but they work great for a large eyelet to hold your albums together. So I just quickly showed you that um, how I added those to the sleeves of each of the pages. And now here's where I added another flower. These are new from Wild Orchid Crafts. They're called Pretty Flory. And look how gorgeous those colors are. And you get so many flowers in this one package. They have large, medium, and small. And when I saw this pink one, I knew that I wanted that for the front of my album. It gives just another pop of color. But it did hide my leaves that I like so much there. So I simply, I had others already cut out. I just simply added two more further out. So I knew that they would be able to be seen once I added that flower to it. So that's all there was to it. I hope you enjoyed today's process. Please check out both Wild Orchid Crafts and Knitwit Collections. You'll find the information in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching.